Now, a very quick disclaimer before we begin, Mocha Pro is a paid plugin, and although Boris FX have supplied this software for me to use, the opinions presented in this video are my own. Now, having used Mocha Pro myself, I genuinely believe it is of great value to any After Effects user to have. And in this video, I wanna share with you why you might want to consider Mocha Pro over the built-in After Effects tools. Now, you can also use my special discount code down in the description below to save 15% off all Boris FX plugins. Let's go. As you might know, Mocha Pro is a planar tracker, which is different from a point-based tracker like the tools built into After Effects. What this allows is a much better and more accurate tracking information for a wider variety of scenes. It's been used on almost every Marvel and Star Wars film in the last 10 years, so you know you're getting a professional setup. I can use the information from Mocha to not only just track items into my scene, insert and remove remove objects from my video, stabilize my footage and rotoscope my layers, but Mocha Pro allows me to export and use this information in lots of different ways across multiple programs. I'm using After Effects here and to access Mocha Pro, I can come up to Effect, down to Boris Effects Mocha and add Mocha Pro and then open it up. Now, if you're not familiar with Mocha, we're working the Essentials view here. You can also change back to the Classic view, which just gives you a lot more information. Plus also gives you all of the different options available in Mocha Pro, which we're going to have a look at in a lot more detail. Now, I want to get some tracking information for these buildings here or this moving shot. So we do this by creating what's called a spline. Now, I can use my spline tool up here just to select an area on any number of these buildings to create a spline area. Now, when I select track forward, Mocha is going to track the plane within that spline area. So you can see that it's created tracking information for that particular spline. Now I wanna show you in Mocha Pro that you have different options for creating splines. So we've just used the standard X spline. I can also add to this same layer. So where that spline is, I could also create another spline on that same layer by using the add to the spline tool. I can also use the magnetic spline tool here to create a spline that runs along the edge of a building here. This works a little bit like the lasso tool over in Photoshop where it'll follow the edge of an object. So another new tool that's been added to Mocha Pro is the area brush. So I can use this tool to essentially just paint over the part that I wanna create the spline for. I can scale this up and down by holding command on my keyboard. And then I can simply just paint the area that I want to create a brush for. And this is gonna create a spline, which now I can use to track into my scene. Now the beauty here with a spline is that even if the spline goes outside of your frame, it doesn't matter because Mocha is a planar tracker. It's using the information that's available to it within that plane. I've had some of you say to me in the past, you avoid using Mocha AE for tracking your videos and that's okay, but I would say at some point, you're most definitely going to run into some sort of tracking issue where a point-based tracker just won't work. So it's of great benefit to learn how it works so you know when you can use it. Now, once I've got that tracking information, I can simply just save my project and come back to After Effects and I can use that information in many different ways. Now, this is not gonna be a tutorial on what we can necessarily use that information for because I've got plenty of tutorials already showing you how you can use that information for various things. But just very quickly, I can create a mask from that information to go over my layer. So you can see how simple and easy that process is. Now, the main area where I believe Mocha Pro absolutely excels is when it comes to rotoscoping. Now, that's the process of cutting out an object from a moving video. Just as an example here, I want to show you if I draw a very quick mask around this girl here, and this is the area that I want to cut out of my video. Now, I wouldn't approach it necessarily like this, but I want to show you just how good Mocha is 
when it comes to rotoscoping. Now, because the video is moving, we'd have to track that into our scene. So with that mask selected, I'm just going to track the position scale and rotation here. Now, as I scrub through the timeline here, you can see After Effects has done a really good job at trying to track that mask and on quite a difficult shot. But the problem is here that when I add that mask, it just doesn't look that great. You can see it's slipping around. Now, generally the way I would approach rotoscoping is to break it into smaller sections. But I want to show you just from a very difficult example like this, that if I come over to Mocha, we can use the Planar Tracker in Mocha Pro to get solid tracking information, which will help speed up that masking and rotoscoping process. One of the biggest advantages here we can see in Mocha Pro is the overall speed because it's using the GPU acceleration to really speed up this process. Now, the other great thing which I love is towards the end here where the masks are not quite right, I can just make, go through and make any adjustments that I need on any number of these points and it's going to smooth out all of those keyframes to basically line up nicely with the rest of my shot here. So you can see it's done a really good job at just following those edges all the way through. Now I can go through and create another set of splines here that run through this particular section and then start that tracking process again. And this is the thing about rotoscoping, we're trying to break it down into small sections and then Mocha will piece all those together as individual masks. Now another great little feature here is towards the end I've noticed my track is slipping. So what I can do is turn on the Uber key and I can move these ones right out and that's going to adjust all of the points along my timeline here. Now the great thing here is as long as I save this project, I can come back to After Effects here and I can just come down to the matte view and I can just create AE masks from that information. And that is gonna create individual masks for each of those splines. The other great thing is that information doesn't just have to go to After Effects. With Mocha Pro, I have the luxury of exporting to any different number of visual effects programs, such as Autodesk, Blackmagic Fusion, HitFilm, Nuke, and even video editing programs such as Premiere Pro. So this is a massive thing because it stops you having to go all the way back to After Effects, do all your rotoscoping work, and then send it over to Premiere Pro. You can cut out that entire process by using Mocha Pro. In the past, we've looked at using the built-in Content Aware Fill to remove unwanted objects from your scene. Content Aware Fill works great for when you have something in the foreground of your video and there is simple camera motion. But Mocha Pro is much better at removing larger objects or objects that are partially obscured or when you have lots of camera motion. I wanna show you this example here where we have a really simple shot of these two people walking up the edge of this cliff. Now you might think Content Aware Fill would do a really good job at just removing one of these where we have a really basic camera movement and the sky in the background is not really that complicated. So what I've done is drawn my mask over this layer and just roughly tracked it over this footage. And then I've used the Content Aware Fill to generate a fill layer over the top. And you can see that it actually hasn't done as good a job as we would have initially have thought. Create a lot of artifacting in our video and it just doesn't really look right. So over in Mocha Pro, what I'm going to do is draw a very similar mask that runs around this person here. I'm just gonna grab these, smooth them out here, and then just start tracking this forward. Now, as I'm moving through this video, I'm just gonna keep readjusting this mask as we're tracking, just to help Mocha keep this on track to where we need it to be, to something like that. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just trying to get, again, a rough mask that runs around the edge of the part that I need to remove. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom out here and create a bigger mask, which runs around the background of my scene. So I'm going to drag this underneath 
that layer because it's really important about layering inside of Mocha. We want things that are further away from the camera or in the distance to be on the bottom and things that are closer to the camera to be on top. I'm just going to rename this one to be background and then I want to track that background into my scene. Now I'm not worried the fact that we have different foreground and background elements in this. I'm just trying to give Mocha some rough background tracking information here. And you can see it's done an excellent job at tracking that background information. Now if I go to the classic view here, I'm gonna turn off the tracking on that background layer, turn it back on for my top layer, and I can come down to the remove module. Now what I can do here is just simply click this button and it's gonna generate a test frame for that point so I can see what it looks like. And already you can see it looks absolutely great. It's done an excellent job at removing that. So I'm ready to proceed. So I can just start this whole process tracking forward. So now that that's finished, I'm just going to turn off those layers and I can just scrub through and you can see it's done an amazing job at removing that person from the video. So if I was to save this, come back to After Effects, I can come over to the plugin down here and under Module Renders, I can choose which module I want to use, in this case the Remove, and then hit Render. It's automatically gonna go through and apply that information or that Remove to that layer. Now, if the remove is even more complicated than this, you can easily go through and create clean plates, clean those up, and then tell Mocha that you want to exclusively use those clean plates to remove that from your video. The other great thing with Mocha Pro is I can go through and check any of that tracking information at any point because Mocha is showing me that information throughout my entire clip. The major benefit here is if my track slipped at any point, I would be able to clearly see that and address that specific point. Over in Content Aware Fill, because all of this is done in the background, we can't see any of that tracking information. And if one part of that track slips or it messes up, it's going to affect the rest of that shot. When it comes to stabilizing your footage inside of After Effects, our options are quite limited. Now the first thing I would do is apply the warp stabilizer to my footage. And this can give great results, but the one thing we can notice here is just how much we lose of our image in order to get a stabilized shot. The other thing is it's not quite perfect. If we look at the edges, you start to get a lot of that warping effect. Now I want to show you with that same clip that if I add Mocha Pro, what I can do is create two splines here. I'm going to add to this spline to track that background. So I'm going to track forward on my clip. And even though we have a lot of movement and there's even things passing in front of the camera, like this sign here, Mock is doing an excellent job at tracking that in the background. Now I could have done a much better job at tracking that background, but I wanna show you just how good Mocha is when it comes to stabilizing. When I come down to the stabilize feature, I'm going to select these options here, and then I'm also going to hit center zoom and apply the crop. And if I play through this now, you can see just how good a job Mocha's done at stabilizing my footage without any warping effects. Back in After Effects, you can see just how much the warp stabilizer zoomed into our shot versus Mocha. You can also see how much that shot is moving around in the warp stabilizer compared to how good that stabilize is in Mocha Pro. Another great tool here is the 3D camera solver. Now I can create a 3D camera in After Effects, but Mocha Pro does a much faster job. Here I've created a spline and a track on the bottom part of my layer. Now what I can do is come down to the camera solve and just hit camera solve and very quickly it's going to create the tracking data that I need to create a 3D camera. Now what I can do is just export my camera data, copy it in my clipboard and back over in After Effects I can just paste the new camera data. Now it's used that position data and created a 3D camera that now sits over the top of my scene. The biggest advantage here is the fact that you can use the GPU acceleration to really speed this whole process up. 
Another feature which I absolutely love is a feature called Mega Plates. And for instance, where we have this high definition clip, which is panning of the background sky, I want to be able to create a new plate of that sky in the background. Over in Mocha Pro, what I can do is I can take this HD clip here and just create a tracking spline over the background of my sky. Once I've tracked that, I can then extend this spline out here to cover the section in which I want to create a new high resolution map. And then I can come down here to the mega plates. Then I can set this to auto step and give a little bit of blend. And if I render this now, we get a high resolution sky map. Now the great thing about this is I can take that image now into After Effects and use that as a high resolution sky replacement, which is a massive advantage because you need a high resolution image because you have to scale it up to fill over the background of your moving shot. This is also extremely useful because I can also come in here and draw another mask over an object in the foreground I wanted to remove. And then I can use my remove module to remove that straight out of that image. Hopefully this has given you a bit more insight into why and when you might want to use Mocha Pro over the conventional After Effects tools. Now, if you like this video and you want to see more Mocha Pro tutorials, let me know in the comment section below the sort of videos you want to see. Thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.